Hello, hello, hello. My name's Gloria, and welcome back to Glorious Crafts. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to be working on a couple uh, plant buckets. The buckets you get from like the Dollar Tree and other places. I don't really like the color at all. And they're kind of plain, so I'd like to snazz it up. This has some brown on it from when I had paint on my hand, but we're going to cover that up. So I got this caulk from the Dollar Tree. I couldn't find the one in the little bag, so I got this, and I don't have the squeezy thing. So once I use this, if I don't finish with it, then most likely it'll be trash. But I have caulk to put on here. And I also have, for this pot, I have a non-skid rug mat for texture. I have not used this for my rugs. It's been sitting in my basement for quite a while. So I am going to take this around my pot for texture. Then I'm going to use the caulk. And once that dries, I am going to paint it. So, I'll be right back. I have this pot. As you can see, I try to do some things with it. I do not like the color. So, I'm going to paint it with truffle brown. After I paint it, I'm going to use the caulk. I bought the wrong container. That so I have the caulk in here. I cut a hole in it. And I'm going to be using a non-skid rug cushion to make a pattern. So first I'm going to paint it. And then I'll come back and show you how I stick the non-skid mat on here. And then I'm going to put the caulk on it. And then let it go outside to dry. So I painted it brown and somewhat on the inside. And now I'm going to take my mat that I would use if I was having a rug to not slip. It's a not it's a skid uh, free mat. Um, so like your mat wouldn't move. Keep the mat safe. So here is my non-skid mat on here and I'm just going to hold it with my spackle. Now I'm going to need gloves and I'm going to need a spatula so I can get some out and I'm going to use the glove to smooth it on. So I have the caulk I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to try and put this in here which yeah it fits. So I have my caulk. So I am smoothing the caulk on and I'm going to continue with the caulk all the way around my pot so that I will have some form of texture on my pot. So I will be back and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done putting the caulk on. So I'm running out of caulk. So what I decided to do, I emptied this all out. I am pretty much out of caulk, which kind of bums me out. So I am taking the pieces that I already had, I am putting it on, smearing it down, and taking it off, which will leave the texture. And any extra will come off with this, and you just flip it around. Because I had done this on another one as a trial. So, I am just trying to get some texture on my pot. And I am actually succeeding with texture on my pot.
and then where you want more you turn it around you can wash this off rinse this off and reuse this I have a whole bunch of this non-slip matting for rugs we don't have rugs in my house we have tile floor or hard hardwood floor so I don't really need it so I said you know what I'm going to use this on a craft and that's what I'm doing today so right now I am just putting it on and as you can see it has little bubble not bubbles but little pieces that are coming out and I think this adds nice dimension to the pot so when this dries I'm going to put a plant in it and I'll show you exactly what it looks like see you in a little bit okay for DIY number two I took some Waverly white chalk paint and the majority of the paint is the white acrylic and you know how after 30 days your arm and hammer doesn't work anymore so I'm going to I don't like to waste so I'm going to mix my baking soda with my white paint not exactly sure how much to mix but I want texture and I might need more paint that's why I ended up using the Waverly chalk paint so right now I'm just mixing this together so that I get some kind of texture that I want it's very gritty right now so you want to mix it really good and I want enough to cover this pot right here which I will show you shortly when I'm done mixing so more of the baking soda I might need more paint but you want this to be like a paste and I'm going to be wearing gloves as you can see I wore gloves for the last one but then they got I took them off and ended up getting white paint on me anyway so you'd like it to look like a paste any hard things in there from the baking soda you want to try to get rid of I'm not sure exactly how much I need so I'm just winging it but I don't think this is thick enough the consistency because see how it's dripping I'd like it to kind of stay where I put it. So let's take this big chunk out and mash that up and see if that's all I need. This seems like it's better. So you want to get the sides and the bottom so that you are mixing it all and this seems a little thicker maybe not sticking to this so I'm hoping this is thicker to stay on there so here's what my pot looks like I believe I got this one at the dollar store also I am going to put my gloves on and I'm going to smear this on possibly with my gloves but I'm going to keep one glove off so I have a clean hand so I'm going to take oh you can really hear that huh so I'm just smearing it on to give it some texture it's covering up the lines obviously you know what this reminds me of my aunt when I was growing up lived in a house that had stucco not a fan of stucco especially as a child because you run into that stucco it hurts I 
we're most likely going to need more of the more paint and more of the baking soda but for right now I'm just trying to put it on and then I'm going to try and do some kind of design but right now I'm just trying to cover this up hopefully you can see what I'm doing I like that it's thick though I do like that it's thick so I'm going to continue to do this but I want to show you real quick before I turn off my camera while I finish the other parts I want to show you what I'm thinking of doing for a pattern so I'm trying to get up top and on the sides just like this and then I'm thinking of just doing a little stucco popcorn you know I don't know if anybody knows about popcorn ceilings but when we moved into our house it's over 200 years old and they made popcorn ceilings on most of our ceilings so that you couldn't see the cracks in the ceilings so I am just dabbing on here to give it texture is what I'm after today a lot of texture so I do like the consistency of this a lot so I'm going to continue with the camera off come back show you what it looks like and then when it dries I'm going to decide if I'm painting it or not so that's all I am doing to give it a little texture I like it so I will be back okay that little bit of baking soda and paint did this whole entire container um, just want to let you know that as you're doing it it starts to get thicker and thicker so you gotta kinda work fast and be prepared if this is not something that you could leave sitting and go do something wash or something and run back and finish it kind of has to be done right while you're doing it because it gets thicker let me show you I have a piece in here see it gets very thick and it's not hard to work with though because after I was done I took my spatula and just dabbed all over everything not sure if I'm actually going to paint this or just add some a little bit of highlight to it because I used white paint and I really don't want to cover up the white paint so I'm going to clean this mess up and I'll be back when this dries this one's all dry with the baking soda and I'm going to dry brush some truffle paint chalk paint over this so I have my paintbrush which is right here I have my paint shake it up and I don't want a lot of paint so what I'm going to do is put the lid in here put some paint on the brush dab it off you don't want a lot and then I'm going to gently paint on my pot so you're still going to see the white because I added white paint and now I'm adding the truffle which is so wonderful you can put a lot or a little I don't want a lot so now I'm dabbing where I dabbed off my brush to get some more paint and I'm going to paint right here get some more dab it off just feathery 
coating it with the paint. I just want to add some dimension to the the baking soda and the paint so it'll stand out a little. Dip it off. Put it everywhere you would like the paint to be. So I'm not trying to get full coverage. I'm just trying to add a little dimension to what I put on my pot. So as you can see, as I get some of the paint off the lid, right here, I then dab it on here, and so the brush is completely dry when I'm doing this. I'm not, I, the brush is not wet, and I am just trying to add a little color to my pot. And I think I'm liking how it's turning out. Some spots have more than others, which is fine. And I'm just going to continue to add some paint. And then as I go through, I'll see if I need some more. But I am not trying to cover the entire container because I added the paint with the baking soda. So I don't want to cover all that up. I just want to give it a little bit more dimension and then I'll come back and once it's dry and I'll put my plant in and I'll let you see what it looks like with my plant. I really like it and you can add as much paint as you want or as little as you want and that's about it for this so I let it sit in the Sun so it would dry because it's a very sunny day where I live and that's about it I'll be back I'm gonna go put some potting soil in here and come back and show you what I've done and let you see what it looks like the end product okay so here's the one that I did this is the one with the baking soda it has basil in it and the one I used with the caulk has chimes in it. So that's how nice they look. For this bucket, I want to snazz it up a bit because it looks too plain for me. And I was thinking of putting towels in there for my bathroom. So, I have this twine that I'm going to use on the handles. And then this rope, I believe I'm going to do on the top a little bit and on the bottom. And I might change the color in the middle. I am not sure. Our bathroom's white, so I might want a little extra pop of color. So I'm going to start right here and start gluing down the bigger items. I'm using my glue gun and I am going to Put this up as far as I can. Try not to burn myself. I'll tell you what, hot glue burns. Oh, I've had so many. I don't like them. So you just want to hold it a little bit so it stays up. 
and I'd like to do like two so I can cover this glue also on top and two on the bottom so I like to add a decent amount of glue to put my rope on and hold it up there and then this will come off it's very easy to get this off I'm liking this already it's making it look a lot better I might put fabric here I don't know I'm trying to think of what I want to put on there but I'd like to put like a basket in the bathroom for towels so that they're not junked up because our bathroom doesn't have a lot of space especially our downstairs bathroom because it has a stand-up shower a toilet and a sink but not a lot of room so I'm thinking I could even put this on the floor in there and it'll look pretty so I'm going to bring this around so that it's going to line up and cut this because when you pull on it of course it comes off the glue cutting through here is a little bit tough you just got to keep at it and I also have a knife somewhere that I use for the to cut the caulk open So you basically have to be persistent with the cutting and and I'm going to glue this again because it came off because I was pulling on it and put it around and then bring this around. you got to hold on to it a bit so I am going to do the two layers and then I'll be back to do the handles so right now it has the two on here and what I did was I turned it upside down so the glue would drip down more so and then as I went through I added glue in the middle and scrunched them up scrunched them all up so for the handle, I waited till this got hard and I put this piece on. So I have a little container of twine here. So I'm going to put some hot glue right here and put some over here and try to start wrapping this around before it dries. next one and then you just take your twine through here and you try to get it to stick to the hot glue it's still a little sticky which is great and you keep wrapping and you might have to put more glue on it but that's what I'm going to do right now I'm going to wind this up with this twine For the twine on the top, uh, every once in a while as I went around, I added a little glue on the inside, not a lot. I am not a fan of how this doesn't go all the way up, so I'm going to add some more of the rope to get it closer to the top. So I'm going to start here and go around. So you want to use a generous amount of glue. And if it spills somewhere else, it will peel right off the plastic. I 
think that looks better because it's covering up most of the blue up near the top. So you got to hold it on for a little bit so that it adheres. You got to watch don't burn your fingers. I think that looks really, really cute. And then I'm going to do a couple on the bottom, but I want to finish the top first. And I do like these wispies of the string. I just cut some of them. You can burn them off. Um, if you're young and you're doing this crap, please have an adult help you. If they're too long, I would just snip them off. But if you're young and you're doing this craft, please ask an adult to help you burn off the excess of the strings. So I'm going to come over here, put a generous amount of glue. Some of it's going inside the bucket. I'm okay with that because I can pick that off later. So I just want to hold it down not burn myself and have it on there and then I'm going to come back after the bottom's done and I'll show you what it looks like and this is the end result of the bucket that I'll be putting in the downstairs bathroom with some towels most likely on the floor, not a big area down there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please come back, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and have a blessed day. Bye.